page empty, candidate number 6093. Okay. So the first question is, in what way does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and conventions of real media? So for my antagonist, I made sure that the um, image of him was consistent so that it gave narrative and it portrayed his authority in the trailer. And also I made sure that in all of the scenes that he was in, he was not identifiable. So his face or anything wasn't in the picture. As you can see, his face isn't identifiable here or recognizable. For the victim, I picked each from maybe one or two from each social group most confident one from each social group but for like the geeks or the populars and I picked the most confident one because the most confident one is normally the most vulnerable. Um, for the protagonist, we didn't have a, a main protagonist so we gave all of the characters a little element or a trait from the, like the protagonist thing. and also this made the audience a bit more confused so, they, so that they feared hope so that is more scary and it fits the genre better. And here's just one of the um, groups. So I said, um, at the end of the horror, horror trailer, we put social media platforms. So we put Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And it's just so that it can distribute and advertise as well. So when they see this, they'll click on the link and then they'll tweet about it once they've seen the movie. Or like, they'll just give us advertising and it'll help circulation. And I said, um, on the homepage of the trailer, um, on the homepage for the trailer, on my website, I put the trailer as the first thing that comes up. And I did this because I got the convention from the Bling Ring. Because as you come onto the website, the first thing that comes on is the trailer, and it plays automatically. So, this is from the Bling Ring. Convention News was the um, production companies um, and distribution companies. We took Ghost House and Lionsgate. Um, you had to shorten the, um, the opening of Lionsgate as it was just a trailer. We didn't want the whole thing because that's normally for the film. Yeah. Lionsgate, Ghost House. So I used the convention of having equilibrium and a disequilibrium from Tor Tordoro's theory. This is the audience so that the audience is aware of the downfall of characters and then a resolution. A convention that, challenge, um, that we challenged was the editing process, so we had multiple cuts to create a flickering effect um, so that the audience felt that they were being disconnected with the characters and their safety was at risk. I said, um, my trailer also challenges the typical horror um, conventions. As a convention, like conventional trailer is about two minutes long and ours is about a minute and a half or a little bit shorter than that. But it possesses all of the relevant conventions in that. Um, we also used social media links attached to our website as well to help distribute and promote our trailer. So it's um, on the website as well as on the trailer. The music we used was Prometheus. This is a very tense track that allows the suspense to build before shocking the audience into like a key scene or the narrative line. So like, within us all, and then it will be like, boom. This convention is like used for most horror trailers, if not all. The costume I used was very conventional as it fit the location because it was set in a sixth form and all the social groups were relevant. So for example, the smart group wore, three, um, wore glasses and suits, and then the antagonist was dressed in all black to signify the dark side or the unknown. The musical set was set in the school sixth form. The rooms we used were classrooms, drama room, drama costume room, corridor, the astroturf, and the common room. So here's the drama room. So the second question asks you about how effective the combination of your product and the ancillary text are. So I said that um, when we created the website for the trailer, um, we embedded conventions of the horror genre. So it introduced the audience to the trailer as soon as they clicked on the website, like I said earlier, as a form of advertising for the film. For many different websites like Bling Ring or The Devil Inside Movie, the audience is showing the trailer automatically as soon as they click on the site. This is effective as it shows the it allows the audience to see um, it as soon as they click on the site, and it demonstrates convergence of media platforms. So that's the bling ring. 
and seven, that's R1, and that's the debonant size. So to keep the consistency and convergence, we kept all of our text um, on the website, the poster, and our trailer the same. This is so that they can, uh, the audience can understand the link between them. And also, um, from our other case studies, we've noticed that they've keep, kept consistency between them. Um, for the website, we created a website for our trailer, as I said earlier, and it's this is a convention of all media. So on the website, the convergence is used by having social media apps at the bottom. So you can also click on them. As I said earlier, this makes it an overall successive, successful product as it synergizes effectively. In my trailer, the first scene with, uh, with the antagonist shows posters, and on these posters of the victims, they all have crosses on the head. And this cross then is used again on the poster within the same female victim and again on our website. So this links all three products. So here's the post. This is in the trailer. Here's the actual thing. It's, there's a cross so you can't really see it in the lighting. <laughs> and then on our website of the cross. So our audience feedback. So we asked our audience questionnaire where... Um, where they get to express their views on our trailer. Here are some of the words that they use to describe it or, to comp or movies to compare it to. So some of it are interesting, unique, captivating. So paranormal activity, they said um, thriller, blood, fear, dark, conventional, captivating, danger, realism, scream, horror. And then another one, some of them said torture, conventions, students, the devil inside, devil, and they enjoyed it, angles, fast-paced victims. We asked them um, audiences aged 13 to 18 to rate the movie out of five. The average rate was around three stars, which suggests that it's, they potentially might have been too complex for the younger audiences, or just not popular a popular genre with them. So this is the graph that shows that. There's most of three. Um, this is, what would you go and see the film? One never, ten very likely. The majority of them from like six upwards, said that they would go and see the film. I said, this pie chart shows the percentages, and um, the results show that the majority would see it, and actually pay money to see our cinema. Many commented and said that the editing was professional and realistic. This demonstrates the development of our ed editing skills. So um, many participants said that they, um, that we convey conventions, conventional scenes, and it portrayed the narrative, so they understood the narrative and they showed the equilibrium and everything. And the majority understood the narrative well and very well. There was only a few that didn't, and they might have been the younger audiences. This pie chart shows the conventions that they recognised. Most of them recognised the victim and the antagonist. So this is what we was going for because they're the main characters in ours. And the last question, how did you use your media technologies in the construction and research and planning and evaluation stages. So planning and research, we did Vine, which is a six to eight second video creating that. This helped us with the narrative, creating a narrative and looking up conventions of popular um, videos and enjoyment for our target audience. As part of planning, we did a Swede. This is where we had to get the key um, scenes out of Mean Girls and recreate it so that the audience would understand it. So this helped us with creating a narrative once again and finding conventions. Another project we did was some handheld cameras and short film that we created by creating this film called Kitty Play. Um, it develops my camera and editing skills alongside my directorial skills. So Photoshop, to an extent, it was foreign to me as I used it in AS, but I wasn't that familiar with it. So we did an exercise with Beyonce and Ryan Gosling where we had to put them together in a random scene but make it look realistic. And this is the outcome. We also used laptops to help us research the conventions on the horror, um, trailers, tutorials on how to use software and the um, software itself. So. With the construction, we use digital technologies to like the cameras and I learned how to manually focus, to use the correct lighting, the shots that work pay, um, best frame of an image and get correct lighting again. Another digital technology was the HD camera. We actually used it to film our trailer. 
Firstly, I was taught how to use the different elements of the camera, so like the buttons, learning how to do close-ups, mid-shots, over-the-shoulder shots, handheld camera shots, using the tripod and the camera. This is an over-shoulder shot that we did. Another technology was Wix. This allowed me to construct the website for our trailer and its franchise. It also provided us with a basic layout which we were then able to distinguish with our own movie style. This academic year, I was introduced to a Mac, which I didn't know anything about. Um, I had to I learnt the basics, but to further my knowledge, I had to go on YouTube and research tutorials, but it was Final Cut Pro X, and then I had to use that to edit and manipulate my trailer. I then used um, yeah, Photoshop for the, for the poster of our trailer and we removed the colour of our eyes and we lightened up the picture a bit. Also, we cut out the background and added text to make it professional. So for the evaluation, I used the Weebly website to show how I progressed and developed my skills and understanding of the conven conventions within a horror film slash poster website. So on my Weebly blog, I not only showed, um, showed my progress, but I also had critical feedback from my audience and evaluated my own media products. One way I was able to get feedback on my trailer was through questioning, um, through the questionnaire that I created on Microsoft Word and handed to the audience after viewing. This gave me feedback from the audience um, from the, about the conventions identified and the editing that they recognised. After the creation of my main product and ancillary text, I evaluated, um, I evaluated it on a Prezi document. This Prezi allowed me to explore the different convergence and um, converging of media, so like YouTube and images from Google, and also having screenshots and using my own images from our files. So it's on a multimedia platform, and it allowed me to critically evaluate my products. Well done. Excellent. Okay, Okay, and thinking about um, the feedback you had from your audience, would you do anything differently next time in making your product? See, from my audience feedback, I might heighten um, the age, age rating because as it was a bit complex for them. Also, our editing was our editing was good, but maybe when I'm asking the audience feedback, I should make it a bit more simpler for them to understand what we meant by editing. Also, with my trailer. I think I need to make it longer and introduce the antagonist as like have make him have a bit more of a narrative and he doesn't because he's not we don't know his narrative from the trailer so I make it longer as well. Okay, um, what? Uh, how could you embed more of your trailer or more of your poster in each other each other's products? So we're talking about convergence here. Um, you, you demonstrated how you'd done some the with the text and the title, but I wondered what other things you could have improved upon. Um, one thing that I could improve on, I guess, um, I'm not quite sure. I think that I could have maybe the character come on first, like on the devil inside, it has the character, and then it just goes into the trailer. So just have it link a bit more, maybe the colour scheme and the layout and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk to you. Um, about one final thing, which was uh, when you were when you were developing your production skills, and you you said very nicely how you uh, the first time you touched a Mac. Yeah. But what? How has that embedded your media practice? How has it improved your media knowledge? Having uh, access to equipment such as that. Oh, having access to equipment like that allows me to edit it professionally, mm -hmm. and having like the Mac and the Photoshop. Because last year it wasn't as um, developed, so I did it on Surf Page Plus before, and now that it's more real, it's more technical, and it gives you more opportunities and to do like what you want. Give me an example from the trailer which you think you've learned how to do this year. I've learned how to add text and make it in time with the sound. I've learned how to turn the sound up and down. I've learned how to flicker, make effects, and jump cuts. Yeah. And that's helped you with the with my trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Paige. That was really good. Well done. That was really good. Well done. Uh, press the button.